Okay, so today, though I borrowed uh, the slide from previous quad, I just make some editing because I saw some typographical error. So I just did some editing to the slides. So today we'll be talking about uh, chapter nine uh, of the book, which is a uh, simple normal uh, regression. That is uh, what we'll be discussing on. Um, for like uh, the learning objective uh, for this chapter. So we are going to be building simple uh, linear uh, regression model. Then we are going to understand the Bayesian approach to, to regression. Then we are going to also interpret appropriate pro models. Then uh, we are going to simulate uh, the posterior model of the regression parameters. Then we are going to utilize uh, the simulation results uh, to build a posterior understanding of relationship between the response variable, which is Y, and also the predictor uh, variable, which is X. Then from there, we are going to build a posterior predictive model uh, of Y. So before I start, let me just put on my um, so. So basically, uh, this uh, chapter in which I will be looking at uh, is basically the beginning of uh, uh, the unit three of the book because in in unit one of the book, I think we learn how to how to think like a Bayesians and to build a simple uh, Bayesian model. So in unit two, we also learn how we also learn how to we can explore how to simulate and analyze uh, this model. But basically in this part in which we'll be look, looking at in the, the unit three of the book, we are going to be looking at how we can work with regress, uh, different type of model. We, we are going to look at the regression, uh, linear regression. We are also going to look at classification problem where we can use the uh, logistic regression. So, and also we are also going to see how once we are through building this model, how we are also going to want to evaluate uh, this model to see how uh, robust uh, this model. Those, those are basically uh, the summary of uh, what we'll be covering in this part because this unit three is just the, the, the another section of the book which talks about a uh, 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 regression model difference. So we'll be covering different type uh, of a regression model in our so for the first part uh, of the book, uh, they basically talk about uh, looking at the terms. So in every model in which we are building, we are going to have, first of all, we are going to have the response variable. We are also going to have uh, the predictor variable, which can be ranged between x1 to what xp. These are the predictor variables. So what we are trying to do we want to analyze for quantitative response. So once we are, our response variable is quantitative, we know that basically we are talking about, we have a regression problem. But uh, what we want to analyze categorical response, in that case, we are we're looking at, uh, we have a classification problem. And this can be, uh, we know that this basically is going to be logistic regression in which uh, we are going to, to use uh, in that context. So. In this chapter, we will focus on the normal uh, regression model. So that is basically what we'll be focusing on uh, in this uh, in the chap this chapter. So our toy example will be will come from a, a bike sharing service. We will try to understand the demand for its service. So basically, what we want to do, we want a model of the number of rides per day. So once we want this. In that case, since we are talking about a uh, uh, quantitative response, so in that case, we cannot use uh, a Poisson model is not valid here because we do not have an equal mean and variance because we do not have equal means and variance. So we cannot use a Poisson uh, regression model in this case. So we need to use our normal uh, regression model. So instead we are going to use our normal model, which is our regression model and the model they do specify the formula which is yi, which is going to be, which is the response variable that is the, the right per right number of riders in a certain day, which that day uh, they use that day as i. Then we have our mu, 
which is, I think this is the global mean, they explained that this is the global mean. Then we have the sigma, which is uh, the degree of, I think, or the degree of uncertainty around, which is our, the standard deviation. So that they assume that all this value must be normally distributed because for us to fit this model to fit very well, the model, I think it must, the, it must be uh, normally distributed. So they also specify that the sigma, which is a, some pro model, because in every model, we need to have some pro information. So we now use from those pro information to build, we are going to see how we can use it to build our model. And in that case, we are going to have some parameters in which we are going to uh, derive uh, from that uh, model. So, so in this, so basically in the first part uh, of the book, we are going to see how we can build uh, the regression model. So in every, first of all, we have this as a data model. So in every data model, we will have a, a we have n data pairs of bike ridership, which is y, and the temperature, which we are, which is our uh, 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 predictors, which is x. So we are going to have y uh, y one, x one, y two, x two, and to y n, x n. So here, we, our pro knowledge suggests a positive uh, linear. Uh, relationship between ridership and temperature. That means uh, the warmer it is, the more likely people are, are using bike uh, sharing services. So the more as the temperature goes up, see, because the relationship is positive, so more people are going to what? Uh, they are going to demand uh, to use uh, the bike, uh, ride share the bike. They are going to hop on the bike. So we are now moving away from the from the global mean, which is our mu, to what we call uh, the local mean, which is mu i, where i is one day, because the global mean is just like a, I think the, if, I, if I'm wrong, so please you can just correct me. I think the global mean is just like the grand mean when we build the model. Hello, Ms. Gabby, I think I am right there. I think the global mean is just like the grand mean when we build that model, the global mean. Yes, I think you're correct. Sorry, I was okay. muted. Okay, so I think the global mean is just uh, the, the grand mean. So we are moving away from the grand mean. We are now using the local mean, which is mu i, where i is one day. So we are using the mean for each day. If the relationship is linear, then they do suggest the formula of the model, the formula which we can use because it's going to be mu i, which is beta zero plus beta one x i. So this is going to be the formula where beta zero is the intercept coefficient, but it is hard to interpret because, because they do study will you rent bike when it is zero degree Fahrenheit because by that time, Temperature, it's going to be very cold. So we cannot rent bikes bike, uh, at that uh, specific uh, temperature because why beta one is a temperature coefficient. It indicated the typical change in the ridership for every one unit degree increase in temperature. In case we have just one quantitative predictor, it is called uh, the slope. So this, mm -hmm. if we have just one, a uh, quantitative uh, predictor, we can just call this as the slope from the model. So once we have all this information, we can use it to make prediction about the number of ridership. So once we have this in place, we have, we have the value for intercept and we have uh, the value for slope. So we can make, uh, and maybe we just have a specific temp at a specific temperature, we'll see that in subsequent example, we can make predictions about the number of ridership in which we can have in that case. So we can they now say we can plug all these assumptions into our model. So when we plug this in to our model, so this is what uh, we are going to have as our final model in which we have developed. So, so as we can see that sigma is now about 
it's now about variability between uh, the local mean because sigma is like the standard deviation in every model, which tells us uh, the degree of uncertainty about uh, around uh, around uh, around the mean. So, in every normal regression assumptions, structure of the data accounting for x, y for one day is independent of another day. So the day also explained that the structure of the relationship that is y can be written as a linear function of predictor of x, where we have we have our mu, which is equals to beta zero plus beta one x. So the structure of the variability at at any value of x, y will vary normally around mu, the mu with a constant standard deviation, which is the sigma. So specifying the plots. So in order for us uh, to specify the pro in the first quiz example, they now say, what are our parameters? So in every model, in every model in which uh, we do develop, so we, we are going to come up with three parameters, which is the, the, the beta zero, the beta one, and also, and also the sigma. So in every model, we are going to have this, the beta zero, which is uh, the value of the intercept, we're going to have the beta one, which is the slope, and also the sigma, which is our standard deviation. So in every model we, we do develop, we are going to come up with these three important uh, parameters. So the first assumption of our parameters are independence. So that is the first assumption of every mo for this model is that our parameters, that is the beta zero, beta one, and the sigma, they have to be independent. So because Beta zero, which is also normal. We have we also have some para hyper parameters, which is m zero and s zero squares. The same goes with beta one, and also m zero, m one, s zero, and s one. They do call this as the hyper parameters, in which we can use in tuning our normal, our beta zero, beta one, and what sigma. So. They do also explain for sigma, the sigma, uh, the value for the sigma, the value for the sigma, we must ensure, they do explain in the book that we must ensure the value is always uh, positive. So in order for us to keep to that rule, they use this exponential function. So once they use the exponential function, then they pass in this in order for us to have a positive value because the value must always uh, be positive. So putting it all together. So once we have built all this, we can now put all this value together into our, plug it in into our model, whereby we have, we have our model, which is mu zero, mu i, beta zero plus beta one and x i. So for the beta zero, remember, as I said earlier, there has to be, they, they have to be independent and also normally are distributed, so they have some hyper parameters, which is M0 and S0 square. We also have beta one, which has its own hyper parameters of M1 and S1 squared. Then the sigma, which is the exponential, then they put pass in the L. So that you also explain that for model building one step at a time. So we need to build our model step, one step at a time. So it has to be in step. First of all, y is discrete or continuous. So in our own case, our y value, our y value, which is the number of ridership, it is continuous. So in that, the, the appropriate model, the appropriate model for the data. So in this, our own case, we are using a simple linear regression to build this model because our value of the ridership, it is a continuous variable. Then we need to rewrite the mean the mean of y because it's ridership. We are trying to predict the number of ridership as a function of predictor of x. So in that case, we have the mu, which is beta zero plus beta one x. Then we they also explain we have to identify unknown parameters in our model. Then after we have identified these unknown parameters, which is the beta zero, the beta one, and the sigma. Those are our those. Uh, our unknown parameters are from the model. So after we have identified those unknown parameters, then we now proceed to note the
the values these parameters might take identify appropriate pros for those models. So we need to know the values. Then once we know the value these parameters are going to take, then we, we need to now think of the appropriate pro in which uh, we are going to apply uh, to this model. So that is all uh, for this section. I don't know if you have any comments or contribution before I move. I think you are muted. Yeah, no, now you can hear me, right? <laughs> Sorry yes. about that. I always forget. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I think so the, the 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 idea here, and I like that they start with a with a linear regression, right? Like the typical regression that we usually do, because we're so familiarized with that if we've taken any intro stats class then that's with what we start right right the linear the basic linear model so that's so that's great then um they go to sort of um like um like i don't know if highlight is the right word but they go into detail into how we can start building the model because that's the important thing, right? Like once we once we have this model, which is the last part that you did, and then yes. how with that, with all those equations, with how we selected the prior and all of that, then we oh, use that to build our posterior predictive model. So, um, so, that was like the last part of that chapter in, in in going if you want i can share my screen here let me see okay let me stop sharing so that you share okay okay yeah so now let me share my screen okay okay so then um so then you yeah there we go okay so then um, when they do this model building, right, that we, that you just highlighted, that we go one step at a time in saying that, okay, so we have the, um, we have the, pro we have the, um, the model, we know what our covariate is, we have the model sort of, um, drawn, if you will, or, or specified, then we have to start thinking about those priors. I don't think you talked about that part, right? But we have to select which priors to use because we need to feed stand, the use stand, right? So we need to feed the computer two things, the model, the, the, the linear equation, right? The linear model, and we have to give it, um, well, the data, I suppose, three things, the data, the, um, the model, and the priors. We have to say, well, these are our priors because that's what, in the end, that's what they are going to uh, give us with the posterior. So then, so what what we have, what we can do are two things. So we can go with uninformative priors and just say, well, for for normal distribution, we can go because each one of them has a normal distribution, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, the yes, priors. Yes. Yes. So then we can go with uh, with an uninformative normal prior, which would be, which would have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. We can just say that like a normal uninformative regular uh, prior for normal distribution. Or what they go through in this chapter is that based on past bike share analysis or ba based on the the past data that they have seen, then they understand that on average, the temperature, the daily temperature goes from 65 to 30, 70 degrees for DC, for Washington DC. And it's typically around 5,000 riders. So when, when, when the temperature is around 65 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, then you're gonna see around 5,000 riders outside. But you could get anywhere from 3,000 all the way up to 7,000. That's like the range. Yes. However, yes. every time you're increasing the temperature by one degree, 
So let's say we are no longer 65, but we're 66 or 71 or something like that. Then they have seen that ridership typically increases by 100 rides. So the warmer it gets, the more people are riding their bikes. They, they, they like, of course, riding the bike when the weather is nice. No, and it's cold, right? Like, like right now. So, um, but this average increase could be as low as 20 riders or as high as 108. So they have like these sort of um, ranges and they have this sort of um, mean that they can use to create their prior. So then they go through that and then that's what they, what, what you, what, what we see here. So then they, they're saying that basically by inputting these, um, these values that we saw right now, right? Like we saw that if on average temperature is 65 and then they see that the slope is gonna be more or less, this, the slope, right? This change is gonna be around a hundred rides. And they see that the range that can go from 20 all the way up to 180. So based on that, they can create these distributions or they can come up with these distributions for the mean and the sigma for each one of these priors, which are, where are my priors here? Oh, here, which would be um, for the intercept and for the slope. So the intercept is gonna be when, when it's zero, right? When, when, when we have zero riders outside, what's gonna be that temperature? When X is zero, what's gonna be Y? So based on that, they come up with these numbers and that the numbers that we're gonna put in these prior. So they're saying that on average, well, not on average, they're saying that when the temperature, no, when we have zero, when the temperature is zero Fahrenheit, I think that's what they're saying here. Yes, yes, yes. That is Let gonna me, be 100. They're gonna have 5,000. 5, um, I think that is the centered intercept. When the temperature is zero, they're gonna have 5,000 riders. I think that's what they're saying here. And the sigma or the st standard deviation is gonna be 1,000 yeah. squared, right? Yes, yes, I yes, think. yes, yeah. But they did that by plotting these, these, um, these values Lots here, normal. right? Yeah. Yes. So, so they, they build the, the distribution based on these values that we saw here uh, before. I don't know. I, I hope this is making sense because it makes sense to me. Yes. I hope yes. It does for everyone. Else. I think. I, yes. I still have. I still have. It's still part of the discussion. Okay. So then, this beta one is the slope, which which is what we were saying before, right? Like a hundred. Uh, when the temperature increases one, which is X, right? When X, X increases one, what's the change in Y or what's um, the change in yes. ridership? So by every one degree Fahrenheit increase that we Guys, see- we're going to have 100 weather, riders. We're gonna have 100 riders more, right? An increase of 100, that's, that's yes. the slope. If it's positive, if it's negative, then it's a decrease in, in, in people riding their bikes. Um, but in this case, it's, it's a positive slope, so it's going up. And they saw more or less a standard deviation of 40 squared. So, um, so then they use that, and then the sigma, um, the sigma is the error, if I'm not mistaken. That's the only the thing that I don't know. Is the standard the deviation. Uh, the sigma is a standard deviation. No, but the um, this part right here. Oh, that's a standard deviation. Okay, but but this yeah. one, that's a standard deviation. Yes. Yes. Oh yes, yes that's the, that, that's that's the sigma. Oh yes, you're correct. Sorry, sorry about that. I was lost a little bit. Yeah. So that's that standard deviation of the local model, like they said, of like the individual model. Um, okay, so then they 
have these priors and then they can do the posterior simulation. They can do that several different ways. The, the only way I know how to do it is by using MCMC chains or the MCMC um, algorithms. Yes. But I don't, uh, so they use STAN to do this. They do it first by hand, which is, that, that math is beyond me, right? But, um, so what they do is they put the model, which I don't see where that is, but they, they can put the model and it's, a, it's an object called model. Um, oh no, they don't, they don't use MCMC. So what they do is they just put it in stand. They put the data and then they say it's going to be Gaussian. They put the priors, which is going to be the yes. intercept and the slope and the, the, MC, um, the, the sigma. MC, MC. And then the four chains, four chains means that they're going to run, yeah, four different yes. things. Yeah, that's right. And they're going to do um, 10,000 oh, iterations in total. Yeah, those iterations I think are per chain. Yes. So it's yes. going to be 10 per chain, and they're going to use this number to start so that we can all get the same result. Um, okay, so we put that into Stan, and then because of the, word, the way Stan works, because not all the other our packages work like this. So Stan, in that sense, is very is very easy because of that. Others will just give you each one of the parameters. But here, this is the way the stand gives you the, um, the information, which is very easy to interpret, right? So then we can only, all, the have to, all we have to do is put the values of the parameters, which would be the intercept and the slope and the sigma. And then we can put that into an equation we, we can we can use that to build our distribution our posterior distribution yes. um, and then what we have here is the number of these two effective things the way sample size yeah the number of effective sample size and the r hat which is a gelman parameter i think it's called or something like that so in order to assess if we have achieved convergence or not, which means that our chains, what we see here, the four chains for each one of our parameters, if they are stable, if they mixed well, and if they used all the space, right? And if we don't have like little um, steps or something, if they use the entire um, space, um, graph space here, then all of our values have to be under 1.1 here our R hat for each one of our covariates, covariates priors. The R hat for each one of our priors has to be under 1.1. So we do, so that means we achieved convergence, so we can proceed to use this model, right? So we, it's good. And the number of effective sample sizes? Um, it must be above one. Above one, yeah. And this is where it changes from our package to our package because with our JAGs, I think it has to be a thousand. But with um, but here it's apparently has to be above one. So so that's good. What this means, I think, the number of effective samples. I think it just means that there is no correlation between samples between ourselves, I think, I think, but I have to, I have to check. Um, okay, so then our assessment says your model is good. This is how it looks like. And I, I, I always do this too. I, I, I like to like graph my trace plots. That's what they're called. So on the top, we have our chains, how they mixed. And then on the bottom, we have our density plots, which is right in the middle. Right, right in the center of the distribution, because it's a normal distribution, right in the center, it's gonna be um, the value that we got. I don't know if they already gave us results or not, but anyway, that's gonna be the estimated parameter that like the mean, but we can also do the median or we can do the mode 
or something like that, which it depends on the situation. But in this case, I think we can go with the mean because it's a normal distribution and we don't have any, um, any skews in the distribution. So then, um, oh yeah, this is what I meant by doing the model because yeah, yes. so it, it, Stan, I think it already has um, inside, it, it already has coded this part, but because it's a linear regression, but not all programs or not all packages have it. So here is the way we can define the model in case it's a model that Stan doesn't know how to work with, right? Um, and this is exactly what I meant. So we, we save it as an R, uh, like a script, or it can be just an object inside the same script that we're working on. And then we feed it here to the code, which is Stan. And we just say that model code is gonna be that object, right? Which has our data the parameters and the model, which is exactly what we did above. So, so that's like, um, so that's how Stan works and that's important to know. And then the way we interpret the, um, the procedure that's also super important because um, what we have now, the procedure summary statistics, what we have is gonna be the mean, and then in this case, the standard error and the, um, Confidence and, uh, interval. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's the confidence interval or the confidence. Uh, I think it's going to be confidence low. Conf is a confidence interval. What is confidence is level? Yes. Level. Um. Okay. Is I think mm -hmm. somewhere. Sorry. Credible interval. Credible interval. Is that yeah, just that one? Is the credible interval, do you think? I don't I don't really remember. Is that yeah, credible interval? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, perfect. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, that's the the it wasn't confidence interval, it's the credible interval. So then this is what we have here. So we are gonna have this is gonna be our intercept. This is gonna be the slope. This is the sigma and the mean. You can see I don't remember what that is. Mean PPD. What mean uh, is a posterior predictive distribution. Oh, okay. Mean, I don't know what that is. Mean, mean posterior predictive uh, distribution. distribution. Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't know what that is, but we'll figure it out. Maybe maybe later. But anyway, so then we have that, and this is this is gonna be the mean, but we can change it. Uh, we can say that we want to estimate the, mo the mode or the median. I don't know how to do that in STAN, but there are other packages, like um, there are other packages in, in which we can actually ask to give us all three or just one. But anyway, so I, this estimate, I think it's gonna be the mean in this case. Um, referring to the tidy summary, the posterior, oh no, median relationship. Also, then maybe it's giving us the median, this estimate, and it's which is gonna be if we go back to our plots, this value right here, the median of this yes. distribution, which yes. is gonna be exactly the center of the mean. In this case, I'm sure that it would be very similar because there are no um skewness here. Um where where am I? Okay, here. Okay. So then we can create our linear model or li our linear equation and estimate. Um, so then interpreting this again, the same way, when we have, <laughs> this is very funny number, but the way we, we interpret the, I think, um, uh... the X, the, the Y intercept is that when we have, zero when zero, x is zero right. that's going to be the value of y so in this case when we have a, when the temperature is zero degrees fahrenheit then we can expect negative 2000 riders which makes no sense right but that's the way to interpret it and then this is maybe the the, the only relevant value that we can really see 
Yeah. So for every one degree increase in temperature, that the slope, right? We expect ridership to increase by roughly 82 rides. So if we go from 65 to 66, assuming 65 is the mean um, temperature, um, then if we go from 65 to 66, then we know that we can expect 82 more people to be riding their bikes. But there is obviously uncertainty in this relationship, and that's the beauty of having this um, distributions that we can also see that. And then uh, the 80% posterior credible interval for, for that slope is gonna be 75 to 88. So we can have between 75 to 88, we can expect to have between 75 to 88 increased in ridership for every one degree in temperature increase. Okay. Anyway, all of that sounds so confusing, but anyway, it's, um, <laughs> it's just the way that you interpret a, a, a linear regression or a linear model. And then, um, then what they are going to do later, which is exactly this, is to uh, let me see. These pairs provide twenty thousand alternative scenarios. Yeah. Also, time. I'm looking at standard. So you're doing what? No, I'm looking at the time. You know, I, my slide is still there <laughs> so that we can meet up with them. Your slide? The notes, what I'm the notes. sharing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Wait, you cannot see my, my no, screen? No, I, I can see it. I can see it. I can okay. see it. Did you, did you talk about these things in your slides? Because if you did, yes. I'm so sorry. I said... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I must have missed it then. I'm so sorry. Okay. Then when, where did you? I, I must have missed then. Okay. You talked about the posterior prediction then. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I thought you had stopped before. No, no. I um, still have the. <laughs> is they still in the notes? Even all this one, they are still there. But you can proceed. No, no, no. Then, then if you cover this, I must have. Um, I don't know. Um, did you did you talk about this the pre, the posterior prediction like the way to simulate the posterior to predict it is to make there, predictions? It, it is there, but the density plot was not, is not there. The plot oh. yes, this one maybe you can just explain this, but these ones they are there. Okay, well, no, as long as you understand it, because this is the, the, the thing that always gets me. And I, because that's the model, but this, but that's, that's the model and that's talking with our data. This, they're talking about how to make predictions. Yes. Using yes. that posterior. Yes. That posterior distribution. So that's, that's what always gets me, but. Um, so, so, so it's different, but if you talked about it, then I can, I can skip all of this. Okay. Um, yes. And then, this is, yes. Um, okay, you talked about this. And then, okay, then if you talked about, oh my gosh, did I jump onto chapter 10? What happened? Um, okay, I'm sorry. I thought you had stopped at. Hmm. I thought you stopped at like here, 9.3 yes. posterior simulation. Yes, yes, yes. But if you talked about all everything, then forgive me. I must have just, maybe you went through it too fast and then I, I, <laughs> I missed it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, Was, uh, is there anything else that you want to discuss or that you want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Go to nine ball. Let's look at sequential regression modeling. 
sequential regression modeling. Okay. Um, uh, I think the plots, there was where I saw the plots down. This one is clear to me. This one is clear. Um, yes, I think it's the, just phase one, phase two, phase three. You know, this one was talking about the, the field temperature and the ridership. So I think at, for phase one, where they collected data for a, maybe just like for one month, uh, we did not oh, see yeah. clear path. We did not get a clear pattern there because uh, the temperature at that point, I think the temperature, uh, it was very low for that. So we did not see clear pattern. So, but as they proceed to phase two, okay, as the temperature uh, begin uh, to increase, I think we uh, begin to see some uh, some kind of pattern in the data. But as we now go to, I think phase three, that is where we now see clear pattern because by that time the temperature is going higher. So as the temperature is increasing, we are now seeing more, more people uh, coming out to ride uh, the bike, more ridership. I think, uh, this, yeah. I, think, I think this is very useful. Maybe we are doing some sampling, we are collecting data over time. So the, the, as this data is coming in, so we can just use this same approach to see what is going on, which type of data we are collecting, we can see clear pattern over time. Yeah, I think what they're talking about is exactly that, that if you are just starting with a sample size of 30, then you're just gonna yeah. get a very small window of, of, of variation in the temperature. So that's the sequentiality part of the Bayesian model that as you keep adding more data, and feeding it, that's the sequentiality, right? And feeding it to the model, then you yes. get this um, larger variation in temperature. So instead of just having like around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, now you have yes. all the way from mid 40s all the way to almost 90 degrees, right? So your range is, so that your prediction in the end can be more informed than just based on those 30 data points. I think that's what they're saying here. That's the sequentiality. Um, yes. And I think that the only way they do this is they just keep updating. Yes, well, I don't know yes, if updating. Yes. They keep, they run the model again and again and again, maybe. Uh, again. After each data collection, you can re-simulate re the posterior model by plugging in the accumulated data. Okay, Stan. Prior intercept prior. Yeah, they rerun the model. That's what they do, yes. I think. But the way the way in which they combine these three data, they for at the top where they have data phase one, phase two, phase three. That was, I think I was kind of like confused. Yes, at the top we have data which we are, they now have the passing phase one, phase two, and phase three. Mm. So they the combine they, the three data. Yeah, yes. yeah, you're right. Because now in the model, they announce the data is equals to the input underscore. So once we now say data is equals to underscore, will the model understand? Okay, anything that has underscore, take that to be the data. That's three underscore. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Because the, in the yes, because the first the first underscore will be for phase one, the second underscore will be for the phase two, and the third underscore will be for the phase three. I think so. Do you think this is a list? This data? Do you think this is a oh list God. or something, or do you just that, put data and then put them inside like that? That is what. That's the I only thing that I don't know. Because Except each one I, of these is a is a uh, like a data frame, it, I suppose, like a matrix. Phase one, phase two, phase three. Those maybe are matrices. We can, maybe we can check the book. Okay. I think I have the book open already. 
the notes. Okay. Oh, is I doubt if it is in the notes this way. Yeah, it's there. Maybe we can check. Okay, what's this data saying? It's in the notes, in the Git, in the repository. I think we have this in the notes. Oh, you mean go here to the notes? Oh, okay, let me check. If you have the, oh. my house studio the is open, I think. Sure, it's not. Nice. Yes. You can open it in house studio. Is your house studio open or I can just share no. my house? Let me share yes. my house studio. Yeah, okay, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, you share it. Let's see. All for the Let's, I think we have this. Let's see. Um, Where are we? Uh, uh. Is it here? I think I have passed. Oh, there, there, face paper? Yes. Face one, here. face two, face three? And then, it's oh, there. it's not. It's not there. It's not there. No. Oh, it's maybe they there. didn't put it. They did not. It's not in the notes. It's not. Because okay. even well, this, this is a screenshot of the image yeah. that they put in the notes. It's not there. So maybe you can, let me stop sharing. You can. Mm. No, it's okay. Well, I, I, well, I'll make a note and see if I can find out about that because I don't know how Stan works. I've only used jugs, so I don't know. Okay. But um, but yeah, I think this has been great, Olowo Femi. Thank you. I'm sorry I got lost for a second there. Sometimes <laughs> no, no. I'm very because English is not my first language, so sometimes I get like. I get lot. I I'm very slow at processing English sometimes, and I'm like, okay. so maybe by the time I was I had processed one of your slides, then you had moved on five slides <laughs> afterwards, and I'm still processing slide one right now. I'm so sorry about that. No, but yeah, I, thank you so much. That that was great. No. So then next week we'll do chapter ten. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. I think I also I also learned I also learned from your slide also. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, okay. No, it was the book. I was just reading the, through the book because I, I said, what you have? I don't know what happened to me. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much, Alawafemi. Have a lovely night and I'll see you okay. next week. Okay, thank you very much. See you next week.